when he eventually came round, uh, he had lost his speech, um, but he was lucky to be alive, really. He phoned me to say that he wasn't feeling terribly well. Um, he was feeling confused, and uh, what he said to me was that he, he was having trouble finding his worms. Me, being like a 20-year-old girl, and I was saying, um, sorry, I, I can't read. Can you read that menu for me? I find that's, well, that's quite embarrassing. Somebody said, oh, could you just change that, that document that we're working on? Could you just change that, that line there? And then I realised I couldn't. About 350,000 people in the UK suffer with aphasia, yet few have ever heard of it. Aphasia is a language disorder caused by an injury to the brain, making it difficult to talk, understand, read and write. Second only to cancer and Alzheimer's, it has the largest negative relationship to the quality of life. I was getting ready for a trip to Madrid for a meeting and I was having um, a pre-meeting in London when I started to feel very strange. We ended up in ULCH and uh, was given a CT scan straight away. They obviously recognised that he was having a stroke. He was a very talented sportsman, um, football, cricket, uh, tennis and golf. Um, a very good teacher, um, loved, loved his job. And of course that no longer was a, a possibility for him. Um, so his world has become much, much smaller. He'd been to watch the cricket at the Oval and um, left early because he was driving the minibus the next morning and um, crossed the road at Vauxhall and was hit by a cyclist. Um, hit the kerb and uh, ended up at King's College Hospital uh, where they operated for a, a bleed on the brain. When he got to the hospital and they did the CT scan, the doctors phoned me and told me that um, there was actually bleed on the brain in what is known as the broker's area. Broker's aphasia is a type of non-fluent aphasia. It's caused by damage to the frontal lobe of the brain. People with broker's aphasia can understand speech and know what they want to say, yet they can find it very difficult to find the right words. They will often use single words or short sentences that take a lot of effort. They may miss out some words or use sounds that are not clear. People with broker's aphasia are usually aware of their difficulties and get frustrated when they're trying to talk. To find the words was difficult for him. Um, and from what I could gather, the, the words were in his head, but they weren't coming out through his mouth. When he eventually came round, uh, he had lost his speech, um, but he was lucky to be alive. Went back to work, um, shadowing his head of department. And then we got a phone call Christmas morning and he'd had a massive seizure. The psychologists were, were assessing him and getting him to, to, to look at our words and see if he could recognise them, draw little pictures, etc. And he was having a few problems with those. And then red lighted to the Brompton Hospital, where he was there for another several months. Global aphasia is often related to multiple areas of damage to the language processing parts of the brain. People with global aphasia have severe language problems. They may not be able to speak, understand, read or write at all. Some people with global aphasia may be able to use some sounds and simple words to express themselves. They may be able to understand more than they say, although this varies. Some people with the condition learn to understand and communicate through gestures, facial expressions and body language. When people have strokes, the, the, the first three months are the most important because that's when the most progress is made. The main treatment for aphasia is speech and language therapy. Therapists can assess the problems and help with improving communication. 
They can also support with alternative communication methods, for example, using technology, as well as helping the person with aphasia and their family adjust and adapt to language changes. So I'm a retired speech and language therapist, so um, I've met a lot of people and families who live with aphasia as a result of a brain injury. Um, aphasia is quite a isolating condition. It can be, it's life-changing and it can last a lot longer than people think. They will make progress, but you're always probably going to have some loss of the ability to use your words for speaking or writing. It was a little while before we could get any um, uh, speech therapy. Um, so uh, I read up about it and um, um, went out and bought some flashcards. The flashcards were children's flashcards and they had animals. Who's what picture of this, picture of that. Writing was still a problem. I couldn't write, if, if I had elephant on a flashcard, I couldn't write elephant down. Aphasia recovery is a complex process. But amazingly, our brains have some ability to recover and reorganize even after illness or injury. This is called neuroplasticity. At the beginning I could do half a, less than half a page yeah. and it got really tiring because I'm trying to struggle through each word. Um, writing was also extremely tiring because I, had to, I didn't know the words. I, I knew the words in my head. This is the thing that's strange about aphasia is that in your head all this is going on fairly normally and then when you try and put it on on paper it just doesn't work. And the opportunity came up for me to make a drop-in group for people with aphasia sustainable. Um, a place where people could come and walk through the door and go oh they get it. They understand that it takes me 10 minutes to put my message across or I need to write things down or they need to write things down for me or I need to draw diagrams. And that's just a massive um, joy for people. I had a stroke <laughs> is that immediately afterwards you feel incredibly alone. Mm, you yeah. are disconnected. Yeah. There are thousands of people all there, yeah. but you're just not part mm. of what's going on. Mm, and it is, it is utterly depressing. Mm. And today, at first when I had it, um, some of my friends were really supportive. They researched you online and everything. Um, they try voice noting me, um, see what works and what didn't. Um, and they, they're amazing. I think they are really good friends but sometimes when I when I had my stroke I think I was released from hospital and because aphasia was not well known as a stroke I think it was because ah sorry cut so it when you actually started the charity was mm. it was it uh, difficult to get people to understand what you were trying to do? Well, the drop-in group already was in a format run by the speech and language therapy team, but there was only about six people came, but they kept coming. So I knew there was something really, really important about this group. And come to our group and meet people and you think, well, what's wrong with them? They can talk, they look perfectly fine, there's nothing wrong. But they might have a problem with their reading. They might not be able to write a text message, they might not be able to understand the newspaper. That is as devastating as not being able to converse um, for your self-esteem, for your well-being, for who you are. The Stroke Association are great. They've got much, much better at supporting people with aphasia. I think partly because aphasia is such a difficult thing for people to understand, people don't donate to it because it's so difficult to describe what it is. Um, 
And that's maybe why it's never actually got its recognition, whereas Parkinson's, people, although there's less people with Parkinson's than there is with aphasia, everyone seems to know what a Parkinson's is, but if you mention aphasia, they're like, well, I don't know what that is. What do you mean you can't find your words? I can't yeah. find my words. No, it's completely different. And, and everyone goes, oh, you look fine. But it's deeper than that. It's about who you, you, your self-esteem, if you can't understand a joke or crack a joke or follow a fast conversation in the pub or do a you know order something at the restaurant or something that that's kind of long day in day out a real sort of killer for your self esteem one thing you learn with with dealing with anyone with aphasia is patience and um but Dan has um, epilepsy now as a result but he is um yeah resilient and um good humored <laughs> The Royal College of Speech and Language Therapy have set up a fantastic scheme called um, Communication Access, which helps businesses and um, train up their staff to be better able to communicate. The future of how technology can help people with aphasia is looking very bright. With the advancements of machine learning and artificial intelligence, speech recognition systems are getting smarter and those with aphasia will be able to use them more efficiently. Actually, it's a year since I became a trustee of living with aphasia, um, and I really worked hard on that. And it's helped me in so many ways, like I do all the social media, um, and um, I do the blogs for the website. You say, but that's writing, so how do I do that? But there's ways around it. Um, so I talk into my phone or my device, or rather than writing it. He's he's volunteering two days two days a week. And so you you work in the shop. So you do all the yeah. Uh, so one, two, two hours. Right. Good. This is good. You meet people as well, which is yeah. Good. The dogs. Yeah. Um, We're working with Solo in the shop. He, She's done some really good things with him. Tuesday and Wednesday, right. 10 till 4. Right. And he um, walks here in the morning and then walks home at night, unless it's oh, raining, God. and then I'll pick him up. Yeah, <laughs> yes, exactly. Yeah. It's just raining. Yeah. It's horrible. Yeah, we don't and like then, rain. Yeah, that's perfect. <laughs> the charity is run not by me, it's run almost by the people with the because losing your ability to use words does not mean you've lo lost your intelligence. So. We've got a lot of trustees who have aphasia and we've got a lot of decisions that are made in the group, by the group. And again, sometimes living with aphasia, you get those decisions taken away from you. I think it's so important that people see the invisible things rather than the, oh, you've had a stroke, oh, you've had a brain injury. See aphasia for what it is and like, and everyone's different. And everyone's story is amazing and remarkable in their own way. Making this film about aphasia has helped me understand more about the, the problem and how people deal with it, whether they're young or old. And what comes out of it is that people adapt and they leave good lives. I think I've learned that to live with aphasia successfully, you have to have a sense of humour because life's so difficult and, and you've just got to laugh to make, to make it okay. So there is an enormous amount of laughter and joy and friendship and support that, that people get that is a little bit magic and that's kind of what keeps me going. Um, and I see the relatives getting support and I see people with aphasia getting support and, and it is a little bit of magic actually watching.